Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to this uh, series of uh, solving electrical A6 BNG exam for power systems and uh, machines. Uh, and this question is be about uh, transformers. And basically, there are two different types of transformer questions in the exam. Either will give you the open and short circuit test and ask you to find the model and then ask you for other questions like the efficiency voltage regulation or they will give you the model okay and ask you to find the voltage regulations efficiency and maybe some other other things so this question appears in the exam of uh, may of uh, 2016 so let's see this uh, question it says here it's a 15 kV transformer 2300 by 230 and they give you the open circuit test and the short circuit test without explicitly mentioning that if these tests were conducted on the high voltage side or in the low voltage side. So in part A it says, on what side of the transformer were each of the tests taken? So now for the open circuit test, we have to understand one thing that we actually apply the rated voltage. And when you look here, the transformer is 2,300-230. The voltage that we apply is 2,300 volt. So basically, these values are done from the high voltage side. Okay. So here, on what side the transformer with each test taken? So the open circuit test we're taking at the high voltage side. Now, let's see the short circuit test. Here we apply basically the rated current. So we short circuit one side of the transformer and we increase the voltage a bit until we have the rated, the rated current. So we need to find what is the rated current. So the current I from the high voltage side Basically, we divide the 15 kVA, which is 15,000, divided by the 2,300. And this uh, will give me 6.52 amps. And the current from the low voltage side is basically 15,000 divided by 230, and this will give me 65.2 amps. Now, when you look to the short circuit test, you'll see the current is 6.52. So the test we're taking at high voltage side two. So both the open circuit test and the short circuit test were taken from the high voltage side. Then it says you determine and sketch the approximate equivalent circuit for this transformer with all voltages referred to the high voltage side. So the tests were taken at the high voltage side and the model you wanted to find it refer to the high voltage side. So there is no any conversion this need to be done. But before that, let me first draw the model that we want to find the approximate model. So this is my approximate model. This is the R equivalent, JX equivalent. This is representing the winding resistance and inductance. And then we will have here RC and JXM, and this is the represent the core. So that is the approximate model of the transformer. This is your VPIP. Now VBIP stands for the primary voltage and the primary current. So the primary voltage and the primary current, we don't do any conversion of them because the model is referred to that side to the high voltage or to the primary side while the voltage in the secondary will be avs and this is is over a now avs and is over a this is because of the turn ratio of the transformer so vb over vs is equal to a so vb is equal to avs so if i refer the transformer to the primary VB will stay as it is, and this will be AVS. If I refer the model for the secondary of the transformer, so this will be VB over A, and this will be stays as VS. The current is, is the opposite, actually, as I primary 
for i secondary is equal to one over a of the transform. So because this is, is basically referred to the prime, so ib is stays as it is. So ib is equal to is over over a, and the current in the secondary will be is over a. So now our job is to find rc xm, r equivalent and x equivalent. Now the open circuit test, the open circuit test will give me rc and xm. And the short circuit test will give me R equivalent and X equivalent. So let's start from the open circuit test. Let's start from the open circuit test. And this is a shunt element. It's a parallel element. So it's better to find the admittance instead of the impedance. Okay, and the admittance, it's one over Z. So Y is equal to one over Z, the impedance, which is basically equal to the, and this is the magnitude of that, is equal to I open circuit over V open circuit, which is equal to 0.21, the current I open circuit, divided by V open circuit 2300. And this will give me 0.0000, .0000 three Siemens. Now that is the magnitude. I need to find the angle as we know it P open circuit is equal to V open circuit I open circuit cosine of theta of the open circuit and theta or the power factor angle is the angle of the impedance or it is minus the angle of the admittance. Okay, so this cosine theta of open circuit will equal to V open circuit divided by V open circuit I open circuit. We have all values and this will give me 0 0.1035. And from this, your theta open circuit, you will take the cosine inverse of this is equal to 84. So from this, your Y will equal to 0 0.0000913 angle of minus 84 Siemens. Now I need to convert this into from polar to rectangular. So your Y is equal to 0.00001 minus J.0000093. Siemens. Now, when you have two parallel branches as admittances, basically your 1 over RC is equal to this, to the real part, which is 0 0.00001. And from this, your RC is equal to 1 over this, which is basically 100 kilo ohm. And your XM is equal to 1 over this, 1 over 0.000091 and this will give me around 11 kilo kilo ohm. So I'm done now with RC and XM. Now I need to find R equivalent. This is my model. I want to find the R equivalent and the X equivalent. Now for this is we'll do it from the short circuit test and we will follow exactly the same approach. But instead of finding the admittance, because these two elements are in series, you will find the impedance. So your Z magnitude is equal to the V short circuit divided by R short circuit. Here we found the admittance, which is I over V. Here we find Z, which is V over, over I. And this will be equal to 47 divided by 6.52 and this will give me 7.2 ohm that is only the magnitude we need to find the angle again b short circuit is equal to v short circuit i short circuit cosine theta short circuit from this you will find cosine short circuit is equal basically to 0.522 so your theta short circuit is equal to cosine inverse of this cosine inverse of 0.522 and this will give me an angle of 58.5 so your z is equal to 7.2 the magnitude and the angle here will be plus okay 
58.5. Again, the power factor angle is the angle of the impedance or minus the angle of the admittance. I can change this into a real bar, 3.76 plus J 6.14. This is your R equivalent. This is your Jx equivalent. So now my model will be, let me have a next page. So this is my model here. This is my resistance. So this is 3.76 and this is J 6.14. This is my Xm, which is J times 11 kilo ohm. This is ohms, this is ohms, and this is your RC, which is equal to uh, basically 100 kilo, kilo ohm. So this is your IS over A, A, V, S. This is your IP, and this is your VB. So this is and uh, draw and uh, sketch the, the model. And it says here, find the voltage regulation. It's part C. What is the voltage regulation? It is the voltage at no load minus the voltage at full load divided by the voltage at full load times 100. Now, this full load and this no load has to be at the secondary side because we are interested to know how much the voltage will change going from no load, meaning that the the load doesn't drive any current from the system to the full load current. This is what we want to find. Okay. So now the no load voltage is basically your AVS. The, sorry, the full volt, full load voltage is equal to your AVS. Your A definitely is equal to 10. A is equal to 2300 uh, divided by 230, which is equal to 10. So this is equal to 10 times 230, which is equal to 2,300. So this is your the full load uh, voltage. So what is the no load voltage? The no load voltage when the current becomes equal to zero. When the current equal to zero, your voltage at the secondary is the same as the voltage at the primary. So the voltage at no load is equal basically your v, VB, which we want to calculate. How to calculate that? You apply KVL. So your VP basically is equal to your AVS, which we know, which is to 2300. And this will be our reference. Always the voltage at the secondary is our reference, plus the, the current, which is IS over A, times the impedance, which is the 3.76 plus J 6.114. So that is basically your, your formula. I know AVS, I need to find IS over A. I know IS at the secondary side. So IS at the secondary side is equal to the 15,000, we did that before, divided by the 230. So this gives me 65.2, but I need to everything refer to the high voltage side. I divide by A. So this is equal to 6.52, but that is only the magnitude. I need the angle. It says here that with a 0.8 leading power factor. So the uh, power factor equal to cosine of theta, this is equal to 0.8. So the angle theta is equal to basically 36.9. Now, because this is a leading power factor, then your IS over A, is equal to 6.52 angle of plus 36.9, meaning that the current angle leads the voltage angle, which is basically zero. This is what we meant by leading power factor. The leading power factor means the current leads the voltage. Lagging power factor, if it says lagging, the only difference will be here, this would be a minus meaning the current angle lags the, the voltage. Now we substitute so your VP is equal to the 2300 angle of zero plus IS over A, which is 6.52 angle of plus 
times 3.76 plus J6.14. Now we need to do some conversion. Some calculators can do that right away. And this will give me a voltage equal to 2296 angle of 1.17. So this is my uh, my voltage at the primary. Now I will take only the magnitude. From this, your voltage regulation equal to 2296 minus at no load 2000 at full load 2300 divided by 2300 times 100%, and this will give me minus 0.174%, which is expected when you have a leading power factor. The voltage at the secondary is higher than the voltage at the primary. When you have a lagging power factor, it is the opposite. The voltage at the primary is higher, and you will have the voltage regulation has a positive sign. Finally, is the efficiency. What is the efficiency? Efficiency basically is equal to P out over P n, or P out divided by P out plus summation of the losses in the transformer. Let me redraw the transformer model here to identify the losses that we have in the transformer. So the, trans the losses will be the real losses. So we have a losses here in R equivalent. We have here I S over A. So we have a losses here in the R equivalent. And here we have R C. R C also you have a losses here. So this is the core loss. And this is the winding loss. This is a core loss. This is sometimes called the winding loss or the cover loss. Okay. So what is P out? P out is your S times the power factor. Okay. So your S is basically equal to 15,000 times the 0.8. And this will give me 12,000 watt. Now, this comes from what we call the power triangle. I will keep a, a, a video link for the power triangle. This is your theta, this is your P, this is your Q reactive power, and this is your S. So cosine theta is equal to P over S, or P out is equal to S times the power, the power factor. Okay, and theta here is the power factor angle, actually. Now, I need to find the losses, so I will need to find the cover loss, P cover loss is equal to I S over A square times the uh, resistance, which is basically equal to 3.76. 3.76, which is equal to 6.52 square times 3.76. And this will give me 159.8 Watt. P of the core, the easiest way, we have VP. Okay, so it is I square R or V square over R. So it is basically VB square divided by RC, which is equal to 2300 square divided by RC. RC is equal to 100 kilo ohm. And this will give me 52.9 watt. So your efficiency is equal to 12,000 divided by 12,000 by the summation of the losses, 159.8 plus 52.9 times 100, and this will give me 98.25%. It is expected that the transformer efficiency is extremely high. Now, there's one last point I'd like to make. Look to the cover loss and look to the short circuit loss, 160, 159.8. They are very close to each other. Sometimes they are identical. As a matter of fact, in the short circuit test, basically it is an approximation, very good approximation of the cover loss. Now you look here to the core loss, 52.9, and the open circuit loss, which is the 50 watt. Again, they are very close to each other because the open circuit power loss is very, very close so the, this is the exact metric, and this is an approximate measurement to find the core, the core losses. So that is how we can handle basically a transformer model equation.